Good evening, folks. Welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 19th of November 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Firstly, to the over 500 people that answered our little quiz today, uh, congratulations and thank you. Uh, there, there can only be one right answer where our tropical low lies in the Coral Sea. Was it A, was it B, was it C, or was it D? You can see a lot of convection here at C. Uh, and a lot of people did get fooled into thinking that this was the low. It is in fact at B, so congratulations to those of you that answered B. Now what we look for in visible imagery is the rotational pattern or the swirling pattern of cloud. And with these other systems, the pattern here is very linear. There is no pattern here because it's under underneath the convection. But even around the convection, there's no circular pattern. There's no any. There's no hint of any type of rotation or curved banding coming into this particular convective area. So it or it takes away the C as an as an option because we don't have that. At B though, we see the there is a, certainly a circular banding here coming straight into what appears to be almost like an eye, if you like, a centre of the circulation, what we call the low level circulation centre. D was a red herring. There is a little bit of a circular pattern here, uh, but it was uh, it, it's certainly not where the arrow is pointing to. Uh, but so so D is definitely a red herring. Now I bring that to your attention. It you might think it might be a little bit obvious in a visible imagery, but last night the Bureau of Meteorology had this uh, had this uh, at around about uh, half a degree west of where it is there and the JTWC had it around about where my cursor is right now and that's about a 300 kilometer difference between where the two agencies had positioned the low level circulation center and when we don't have visible imagery it is horrendously difficult to pick where this low-level circulation centre is. So you could have taken a pick between B and C and you could have been right last night because you just would have had no real idea, no real clue. Uh, and I'll just bring that to your attention. Just sometimes we, we criticise those agencies for getting things wrong, but I need you to understand how horrendously difficult it is to pick something this week and pick exactly where it's positioned. Now, they use other other methods to find that uh, that circulation centre, but even those methods were lacking last night, and that's why we had about a 300 kilometre difference between where the two agencies positioned the low-level circulation centre. So congratulations to our weather geeks who got B as the correct response. Now, just to show you just how difficult it does become after dark, have a look at where the low is at the start or around about lunchtime. You can see it here. This is where all that massive circulation is. But try pick it at night. It's extremely difficult to pick out where it's going at night time, isn't it? But the actual low is here. Forget about this massive cloud. This is all that thunderstorm activity being sheared away to the southeast because this low is now quite weak and very vulnerable. It can't it can't really create new thunderstorms around it at the moment because they just keep getting pushed and just keep getting their heads chopped off and being pushed away to the southeast. So nevertheless, despite the fact that it's lost its head, the rest of the body continues to move. So this uh, little low is going to try and do whatever it can to uh, to to try and make it to the Queensland coast. Now you can see still packs a reasonable punch here on the southwestern quadrant, particularly getting up to 25 to 30, possibly even 30 to 35 knot winds there tomorrow. You can see very strong pressure gradient in between. Well, you can't see it, but this is why we're getting such strong winds is because of the really strong pressure gradient between it and a high pressure system. Now, uh, very very quickly weakens out late Friday back into a trough here, and you can see still packs a reasonable punch, 25 to 30. Uh, sorry, 20 to 25s in general, uh, but then eventually washes out. And it washes out on the weekend around about Saturday night or Sunday, and it washes out just off the coast. Now, this is the this is the killer thing. Gets so close to the coast, and then it just washes out completely. Uh, and, you know, if it, if it just takes a little bit longer to wash out, uh, we could get some really good rainfall across the Queensland coast. As, as it stands at the moment, though, all of the computer models have it washing out just before the coast, just here. Uh, 
so we could almost smell that awesome rain, but we probably won't get any more than, than just a few millimetres out of it. Eventually, whatever is left of that trough does come on shore, and you can see one of the key things that brings in a bit of this rain for this north coast and possibly even the northern parts of the central coast of Queensland is this, uh, see how these arrows are coming together, this convergence, and also we've got a little bit of a northeasterly flow instead of a southeasterly flow, and all of that drags in a lot more tropical moisture than we would otherwise get. You can see just how close that heavy rain is. It's so close, you'll almost be able to taste it. So let's hope, fingers crossed, the computer models just, just are off just ever so slightly out to days three and four. And maybe Saturday night and into Sunday, we might get a bit of a dump of, of a bit of rain from this uh, remnant trough system. So I'll just give you a look at the other the other model that we use a lot here at OCC. In fact, this model we use more than the other one. This is the European model, and we can see, once again, packing almost gale force winds to the south. Uh, you can see packing absolutely nothing to the north, so there's not even any weather whatsoever associated with this system. But it, it certainly has these periods where the pressure gradient force here uh, will be increased at at certain times through the day tomorrow and you can see here getting up to 30 possibly 35 even up to 40 knots at times underneath the system and while we're all starting to go yahoo we're going to get something awesome uh, unfortunately the system seems to seems to weaken out before making it to the coast very similar in fact to what we what we witnessed in the GFS but you can see here as we go into tomorrow night uh, the system really packing a punch there's the low level circulation center but look at this just packing a massive punch here in this convergence zone, getting up to 40 to even 45 knots. So the European model is hell-bent on making this a significant system, uh, but obviously not a cyclone. To be a cyclone, it needs to have these sorts of winds wrapping more than halfway around the system's, the system's core, and the system's core is up here. And eventually it weakens back into a trough, and that trough ends up moving towards the Queensland coast. Once again, it really weakens out on approach to the coast here on Sunday. So we're now into about Sunday afternoon, and you can see just all, all that's left of it is this moderate to fresh easterly wind. And the problem, once again, with this model is that it just sits off the coast, just so close, just teasing us all uh, into, into this heavier rain. Even though it does sit off the coast, it might increase the winds here, as you can see between the Townsville to Bowen, or, or even a little bit further north from Ingham through to through Bowen, possibly even as far south as Mackay. Could see those winds increase to 15 to 20, maybe even 20 to 25, if it maintains some type of intensity. Uh, and then as it tracks onto the coast, we might see those winds extend a little bit further to the north. Uh, but you can see here by Monday morning, the whole thing has washed out. You can see how close it is here. This is the rainfall for the 22nd. So we're talking here on Sunday. So we, it's just so close here, folks. If it can just make it a little bit further to the west, uh, we will get a, a tremendous dumping on a few places here, at least 50 mils, possibly, uh, possibly quite a few areas over 100 mils, if that trough can make it back onto the coast and can still be at a reasonable strength. We'll have those northeasterlies and southeasterlies converging right over the top of this Innisfail to probably Bowen area. So, you know, and this, this particularly this Bowen coastline has has not received much rainfall at all so you know if, if if only we could be so lucky that the system could move a little bit quicker to the west and also stay a little bit stronger the slower it goes the the more time it has to weaken uh, so we want it to move quite quickly now for the next few days on its approach to the Queensland coast and by Monday the trough washes out and all we're left with is isolated showers that's all I got for you tonight folks Fingers crossed whatever's left of this low ends up making its way onto the Queensland coast. And let's hope it dumps a, a fair bit of much needed rain. Look, no matter what happens though, I can guarantee you the inland areas aren't going to see much out of this, even if it maintains some sort of intensity. It's just that rain is not going to go inland. We'll be keeping an eye on it. And you can keep an eye on it too by following us on our on our Facebook page. Or you can become an Oz, Oz Cyclone Chasers subscriber at our website, ozcyclonechasers.com.au and we'll keep these videos going for the subscribers every day until this thing hits or until it washes out. But for now, folks, that's all I've got for you. We'll talk again on Tuesday about a possible new threat out towards Fiji. Uh, once again, not expected to come into Queensland, but could be interesting to watch just the same. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Tuesday.